Test, test. Perfect. Good afternoon. I'm Colt McRae, Director of Communications here at the University of Idaho. I'd like to thank you all for joining us at the introductory press conference for our, head, our new head men's basketball coach, Alex Pribble. Just to order of how things will go today, we'll start with an opening statement from Director of Athletics, Terry Golick, and then followed by head coach, Alex Pribble. We'll then open up to the media for questions and answers in the room, and then we will head over to Zoom. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to introduce Director of Athletics, Terry Golick. Thank you, Colton. So happy to be here today. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce our new heads basketball coach, Alex Pribble. I want to tell you a little bit about the process. Uh, in this day and time, obviously, social media takes you a lot of different ways, and you might see things out there that aren't true. So we always try to keep searches on the down low, so to speak. I want everyone to know we had over 50 highly qualified candidates apply for this position. We did use a search firm, and I want to give a shout out to Bowlesby Sports Advisors, Kyle Bowlesby. He helped us with the process. But having over 50 qualified candidates says a lot for what our program is, the venue is, and what it's about to become. So I want to say that with those 50, we chose to Zoom interview 12 the president was in every single Zoom. It's that important to him. After we had 12 Zoom interviews, and I had a staff around me doing these interviews, we pared it down to four. And out of those four, despite what social media might say, until Thursday night, we had not offered or discussed offering or negotiated with anyone. Thursday night, that day, after we talked to Coach Pribble, Unanimous decision of our group, unanimous. Sent him a text late at night, and mind you, his wife is expecting a little one, 37 weeks along. Hey, had a good day visiting with you. Wanted to wait for his answer. He said, it was great visiting with you. You have a lot of great things going there. Next text, can you come over and meet Terry and bring your wife Friday morning? So that's how things progress. So I want to bring to the podium Coach Alec Pribble, and I want to put a jacket, a jersey up so that we can take a picture. Everybody have a picture? Okay, I'm going to put this up for him. He's a little taller than me. All right. Wow. This is, a, this is a special community. This is really special. I appreciate you all being here today. I really do. Um, it is such an honor and a privilege to be the next men's basketball coach at the University of Idaho. I want to start off by thanking President Scott Green and Terry Golick for this opportunity. Terry's leadership and the clear camaraderie within the athletics department with all the associate athletic directors, with Matt and Tim and Garrett and Chris, it's one of the many reasons why I'm excited about this position. The vision that they have for Vandal Athletics is something that we should all be really excited about. I appreciate their belief in me, and I'm not going to let them down. I want to thank my wife, Camille. Um, as Terry mentioned, uh, she can't be here today. She really wanted to be. She would love to be here to meet you all. She's, uh, she's been my rock through this whole process. Um, being 37 weeks pregnant, we couldn't get, out, get her out here, unfortunately. But I want to tell you that we are unbelievably excited that our baby boy is going to be born a Vandal. It's a special community that we're, we're excited to plant some roots here and get to know everybody. Um, you know, I'd like to use today to speak to a few different people, a few different people that, that might be listening in that are here today. First, to the players. Um, I want you guys to understand, you know, we, we've had some time talking through Zoom. We've had a, a couple uh, conversations in person. We're going to meet a few of the guys again tomorrow. But I want you to know that this program will be about the players. That's what this program is going to be about. We're going to invest in our guys from day one. We're going to do whatever we can to help them be successful. Our coaching staff will help them grow, and we're completely dedicated to their development as players and as people. Uh, to the university personnel and the faculty that are here, the young men in our program will be student athletes. The academic caliber of this university is so strong. As the flagship program at the, at, at, for the state of Idaho, I would expect nothing less. 
People are achieving excellence in so many areas on this campus, and we want the men's basketball program to be part of that as well. We want to be a great representation of this university. To the alumni and the community members that are here, one of the clearest assets of this program, without question, is the Vandal family. It's important for me to, to ask you right now, we, we want you to be a part of this program. We need you to be a part of this program. We want you to be part of the journey of the men's basketball program. We want to make this arena, the ICCU arena, the best home court advantage in the conference. I have this vision of, of walking into the gym, you know, the fans loud, the music blaring, and our opponents just fearing to play us in here. You know, the students being here, we, we want this to be a special part of the experience for, for the students, lasting memories for the students that, that go here. Um, there's such a rich tradition. I want to hear from the alumni about what it means to them to be a Vandal. Want, to, want our players to understand what it means to wear Idaho across their chest. I want to, uh, to honor the tradition that we have here, and we want to make the big time where we're at. When we hang the first championship banner in the ICCU arena, I want everybody in this community to take pride in that. Over the last 10 years, I've had the pleasure of building three championship programs in the Northwest. At each stop, we've been in a program that had been struggling, and we were able to build them up into champions. As we begin this journey, I want to make one thing very clear. We are here to compete for championships at the University of Idaho. That's why we're here. The potential is here. The framework is here. The resources are here. The facility is here. We have the leadership in place. We have the community support to compete for championships. With that being said, our success on the floor will be a byproduct of a championship culture. We will have a standard of excellence in all areas. That's where it starts. We're going to compete to be the best versions of ourselves in all areas, on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. A standard of excellence in all areas. Our goal will be simple. Our goal is to get better every single day, step by step. We're going to compete for championships, but we're going to get there one step, one day, one week at a time. We'll be focused on the process of getting better. Now, I can't wait to get on the floor with the players. I really cannot get, wait to get on the floor. Um, you know, the players are going to see some passion right away. When I was a player, you know, I was a walk-on. I played the game with a chip on my shoulder. I was able to have a pretty successful career, end up starting and have some success uh, in my college career because every time I took the court, it was with intensity and it was with a passion. I think that's what you're going to see from us. That's the way I'm wired as a coach. Um, every time we take the court, it's going to be with passion. It's going to be with a competitive fire. It's going to be with a little bit of juice. Um, you know, it's going to be also about fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to play with joy. I think we're going to have a lot of fun out there. Um, and I think it's going to be a fun style of basketball to watch. It's going to be a fun style of basketball for the players to play, a fun style of basketball for me to coach, and a fun style of basketball for the fans to, to enjoy as well. We're going to play fast. We're going to spread the floor. We're going to play with great pace and great space. We're going to have some fun on the offensive set, uh, side of the basketball. I think where you're going to see the biggest difference will be on the defensive end. That's really where our physicality and our intensity is going to show up. That's all about culture. That's all about identity. We're going to compete, be physical, and be passionate on both ends of the court. This program is set up for success. I knew it from the first moment I walked on campus. It's a special university. It's not just about the arena, although this place is beautiful. It's not just about the academic caliber of the school. It's about the pride that the Vandals have in that name across their chest. And this community deserves a championship program. It deserves a men's basketball program that they can take pride in. I want to be that coach charging up the hill with the Vandal flag in my hand, rallying this community. But it's going to take all hands on deck. It's going to take the boosters. It's going to take the alumni. It's going to take the former players and the community members. It's going to take this whole Vandal family. Together, we can build something special. Thank you very much. Go Vandals. Happy to, uh, to take any questions that, that you guys might have as well. Yeah. Well, I know I was grabbing the mic here. Yep. Perfect. I didn't think I would have been more used to that. <laughs> uh, Glenn Mosley, Idaho Public Radio. So I'm the fellow in the room that asked the non-basketball questions. Love it. <laughs> uh, if you could talk to us more, please, about um, efforts to uh, make improvements in the classroom and work with the student athletes in that area. Yeah, it's a great question. So few things. The first is uh, my background, I, I went to school at Cal Berkeley, University of Cal Berkeley, and um, the academic 
integrity of that university has carried on throughout my career. Every stop I've been at, um, we've had 100% graduation success rate. When I was at St. Martin's as the head coach, we were above a 3.0 GPA every semester. Um, and at Seattle University, we've been above a 3.0 every semester. So academics are a huge part of um, you know, the way I wanna run this program. Now, more importantly, when I talk about instilling a culture, that culture is gonna be in all aspects. And so we're gonna talk about a culture of excellence on the court, but that standard of excellence is also gonna take place in the classroom. It's gonna help these players reach their potential as students. It's a big part of what we wanna do. Now we have a, a plan to do that. We have a specific policy for making sure that our players have all the resources they need to be successful when they go on the road. Um, but I can just tell you this, academics is gonna be a huge part of what we take pride in in our program. Yeah. Uh, James Torman Aldrich with the Argonaut. Hey, um, we obviously have a head coach now. Um, so what is the like assistant coach and associate head coach uh, position kind of look like at this moment? Yeah, I tell you what, um, listen to what Terry said about all the candidates. Since I've got this job, I, I think it speaks to the quality, the caliber of this university and the caliber of this, uh, this institution that I've been I had you know hundreds and hundreds of text messages as well from people that want to be here, that want to be a part of this. So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna make sure we have the right team of coaches in place to support our student athletes the way they need. Um, definitely have some people that I'm talking to, but it's gonna be a process that we take our time with um, and that we make sure we have the right pieces of the puzzle in place. Yeah. Dave Summers from uh, Creme 2 News. Uh, what's your first step in changing the culture into a culture of winning here at Idaho? Yeah, well, you know, it's a day-by-day -day process. It really is, but the first step is simple. It starts with, with the players. Um, we gotta make sure that the players are bought into the vision of being the best versions of themselves. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm really excited to spend some more time with them. This has been a bit of a whirlwind here over, over the first couple of days. But when I sit down with them tomorrow and have some individual meetings, that's what I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna say, are they committed to being the, the best versions of themselves on the court, in the classroom, and in the community? Um, and we're really gonna spend a lot of time making sure we, we do that. So roster management is the first piece. Um, and then when it comes to culture, like I said, it's, it's kind of in, in all aspects. It's, um, it's definitely gonna be about the, the classroom. It's definitely gonna be about the community. And then when we get on the court together and we can get a little sweat equity going, they'll understand um, the type of culture that's gonna play out on the floor as well. And you were able to do that at, at St. Martin's. You were able to turn around that program. Yeah. Talk about a little bit about that success there. Yeah, you know, St. Martin's, the year before um, I was there, they were six and 22. They'd struggled a little bit. And it was a step-by-step -step process. You know, we weren't looking for a quick fix. We were looking to get better day by day and year by year. And so when I took over the first year, we were just over 500. The second year, we were 17 and 13 and won a couple games in the conference tournament, had some good momentum going. And the, the third and fourth years, we were in the NCAA tournament uh, for the first time in school history. We won a first round game uh, in the NCAA tournament. And by my, sec my uh, fourth year, we went to the Sweet 16. Um, so it's it's step-by-step -step improvement. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a quick fix. We're looking for lasting success here. And so I think um, I think that's what it's going to take. It's going to take just every day we take the court, trying to get 1% better that day. Yeah. I'm intrigued with a, a group of students, whatever age, mm -hmm. from say grade school right up through college mm -hmm. and how they can come together or not. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in, when our sons have played in sports. Yeah. They're just coaches. I do not know how they do it. My background is psychology mm -hmm. and I've always been curious about what would you do? How do you bring disparate young men and women mm -hmm. together as a team? Because yeah. that makes, it can make all the difference. It really can. It really, it's a great question. It's a great question. You know, I think a, a few things come to mind right away. Um, first of all, the reason that I'm, I'm a basketball coach is, is to be able to have an impact on the lives of young men ages 18 to 23 years old. That, I think it's the most transformative time of their lives. And so this is about more than basketball. It's, the basketball is a tool for teaching them how to be successful in life. And that's the way we're gonna approach this. We're gonna, we're gonna win games. We're gonna be the best versions of ourselves, no, no doubt. But with that said, we have to find ways for them to come together um, I think that a basketball team can be a great example of a di diverse group of young men that come from different backgrounds coming together and achieving something successful together. That's what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, I, th I think it's going to take time. We're going to have to get to know each other. It's more than just uh, going through it on the court. We're going to have to get to know each other on a deep level. And these are relationships that I hope will last a lifetime. Um, 
you know, when I first w was going through this process and um, when our season at Seattle University just ended a couple weeks ago, I was flying back and I received a text message from one of my former players at St. Martin's and it was a wedding invitation to him and his, and his wife's uh, wedding. And those kinds of things are what are gonna stick with me in this process. You know, you build those types of relationships, you know you have that type of impact on the lives of these young men. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for here. So I believe that a lot can be accomplished through, uh, through teams and, and uh, you know, the way we'll do that is on the basketball court. Yeah. Jaden Barfus from the Argonaut. Coach, now that it's later on in the year and the signing day has passed, what is your plan to get kids for next year's team? Yeah, well, there's two, two parts of it. Uh, the first is we need to meet with our current guys. We need to make sure that they want to be here, that they want to be a part of the vision we have laid out for them. The second part is we've got to hit the ground running and recruiting. Um, the most important part of this program is going to be the people. The most important part will be the players and the people that we have in this program. And so um, once I get to know exactly um, what our roster is all about, who's going to be here with us moving forward, and we're going to be hitting the ground running on, uh, in recruiting. The, the landscape of recruiting right now feels like it changes every day with the transfer portal, with NIO, with all the different things that, that come into play in recruiting. And so for us, it's about three things. We identify the first as an academic component, make sure they're admissible and that they're the type of academic students that we want here at the university. The second piece is about talent. We're gonna go find extremely talented young men, great basketball players. And the third piece is about character. We're gonna make sure that they're the type of young men, the type of student athletes that are gonna represent this university the right way. So, um, you know, we're gonna be out there. We're gonna be working hard to bring in uh, future vandals that, that are gonna make you proud. Um, expanding on that, one of the, the big things that Terry talked about uh, entering the you know, search process was navigating the transfer portal uh, in a world of NIL deals. Um, as March Madness continues on, as teams get booted out, there will obviously be a lot of players entering the portal. Um, how do you navigate that and what are your plans for that going forward? Yeah, without talking about too many specifics, um, I can just say this. What we're looking for is lasting success and my belief is that quick fix in the transfer portal is not necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for core players that want to be a part of a successful program. We want to be trailblazers here. We want to do something that hasn't been done in a long time. And we want to make sure that we bring in student athletes that are bought into that as well. So the transfer portal is great. We've used it uh, with a lot of success at the previous stops I've been at, at Seattle University, I should say. Um, you know, a lot of different examples of, of being able to identify the right players in the transfer portal. But what we're looking for are core players that want to be here for time, that earn their, their degree from the University of Idaho, and then we'll be able to supplement from the transfer portal um, based on specific needs. Yeah. Yeah, Coach, what do you know about the Big Sky Conference at this point? <laughs> A lot. A lot. Um, you know, I have, I have the utmost respect for the coaches in the Big Sky Conference. It, it's a league that gets better and better every year. The talent in the league is tremendous. The coach in the league is really strong. Um, and when I was at Eastern Washington, we came in and initially were a sub-500 team, and over two years we turned them into a championship program. So at Eastern Washington, we had a young man named Tyler Harvey who um, was drafted by the Orlando Magic. He was the leading scorer in the nation, and he helped lead us to a championship at Eastern. And I think that's a good example. They've had some lasting success. They've built it over the long term. Eastern's been doing well recently. And so we want to do something similar here. Um, you know, we can build lasting success, but very familiar with the landscape. Um, I think one of the things that excites me the most is, is that it's, it feels like the right fit. It feels like my last 10 years have really prepared me for this role. It's prepared me for this experience. 10 years of, of building championship programs in the Northwest, and I hope to do the same thing here. Um, so the Big Sky Conference is, is terrific. The coaches are great. The talent is great. And I think we're going to be right there with them. Yeah, Coach, you've mentioned several times that you're not looking for a quick fix, but in the world where everybody's looking for a quick fix, <laughs> you know, how do you kind of keep everybody patient? Yeah. You know, it's tough. It's tough. And I think the, the truth is our goal is to just improve. We're going to take steps forward every single day. Um, and so we hope to be able to, to come in and, and compete for championships right off the bat. And that's going to take a lot of improvement during the spring, during the summer, during the fall and building up towards next year. Um, but coming in and a, a drop in the bucket, one somewhat positive season and then trying to start over again isn't, isn't really what we're looking for. We're looking for continual growth, continual improvement and lasting success. So I'm with you. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a quick fix mentality right now, you know, not just on the basketball court in a lot of areas. And for us, it's more about 
really buying into what we can, to a vision of what we can be, you know, two, three, four years down the line. Earlier, Coach, you talked about diversity. One of the, I think, unique things about this university is its relationships with the tribes around here. Mm -hmm. you, you have Titus Yeron on your roster now, uh, yeah. former G8, Chance Garvin played here mm -hmm. before him, uh, Trayvon Allen. Yeah. This university has a, honors the tribes every year with a, at, at a game. Is that something that you uh, can, can leverage? Uh, is it something you're interested in leveraging? Absolutely. I, I don't know if I'd use the word leverage necessarily, but I tell you what, it's 100% it's something I'm excited about. I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to be um, in this community to get to know some of the, of the people um, you know, in the surrounding tribes and just get to know some of, some of the people just that really care about this community. So it's absolutely something I'm excited to learn more about um, moving forward. By the way, I played against Trayvon, so I know what kind of talent's out there, too. <laughs> hey, Coach. Uh, Austin Samuels from the Palooza's ESPN local radio station in town. Yeah. Um, you know, other than just the chance to be a Division One head coach, you know, what made this job and this program so enticing for you? Yeah, there's a few things about it. The one that, word that keeps coming back to my mind is fit. It's felt like the right fit from the start. Part of that is the vision that Terry and her administrative team have for this program. Um, I believe that the foundation is here for tremendous success. So you take the combination of where I've been the last 10 years, the landscape that I'm comfortable recruiting from, the landscape that I'm comfortable um, creating programs with, within from, from um, along with the academic caliber of this school, there's a lot of things that just really come into play that m make me feel like this is a special place, a place that I want to raise my family, and a place that I think we can have a lot of success. So. I'm very, very excited about being a part of the Moscow community and about the University of Idaho. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll head over to Dan Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Save some questions at the end. Great. This is some high quality technology, Colton. It's good work. <laughs> Just let him know if that's what he was saying. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I can hear you guys on Zoom if, uh, if you got any questions. Yeah, well, obviously, they, you know, it's been a while since we've got the, the University of Idaho to where we want it to be. But if you think back, there's been some unbelievable coaches that have come through here and some unbelievable players. You just look at the, the jerseys and the rafters. That'll tell you all I need to know. There's some fantastic tradition here um, and some very passionate people. I mean, it, it's telling how many people showed up here. I'm so, so grateful that so many people showed up here today. And I think that comes from a place of, of um, pride in the Vandals. And so when the tradition is um, as it is so strong, my goal is to get it back there. And so I just want to thank the people who are here today, the people that are passionate about the Vandals, and um, my goal is to, to make you proud. Yeah, I think the first one is that it's about culture first. It's about culture first. We're going to be focused on the process. If you go in and you just start talking X's and O's and, and start talking about talent recruiting, it's not going to get the job done. There's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of people that, that are skilled. It's more about putting in place a culture, and the byproduct of that culture is going to be success on the court. And that's really what we're focused on. Um, so, you know, I think we've learned a lot of lessons, um, but to, to stay focused on the process, to start with culture, I think those are the two biggest lessons that, that I've learned. Um, I've learned, learned from some great people along the way. I should just say that, you know, I'm very grateful to Chris Victor and the Seattle U staff, very grateful um, to the folks at St. Martin's, to Jim Hayford and some of the people at Eastern Washington, Paul Trevor at San Francisco State before that. I've, I've been uh, mentored by some really fantastic coaches and fantastic people. and. Um, you know, I think the lessons I've learned from them, just kind of taking everything I've learned from them and putting it into my own style about culture and about um, achieving success, just a standard of success in all aspects. I hope I'm looking at the right place. <laughs> all right.
Yeah, you know, I have a blueprint of success that I've been working on for a long time. Um, feel like a strength of mine is being organized, having checklists to make sure we never have anything that, that misses. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna really put that into place where every day we're gonna have a plan to get better. It's not just gonna be roll the balls out and, and make things happen. We're gonna try to get better every single day. Now we're gonna have to adjust and adapt to the unique things about this university. Um, and I tell you what, another strength of this program is the, the fantastic coaches that are in this athletic department. I really appreciate some of the coaches that showed up here today. Um, you just look at what Coach Eck has done over the past year and, and what Coach Newley's done to some of these guys. I'm gonna pick their brains a lot as well. I'm gonna learn, we're all a team. We all, you know, if, if, we, can, if we can have a rising tide, it's gonna raise all boats. You know, we wanna make sure that, that everybody's successful here. And um, so I'm gonna be in their ear. I'm gonna ask them a lot of questions, but I have a blueprint for success um, that I believe will work well here at the University of Idaho. You know, it means everything. Um, growing up as, as a basketball fan, a basketball player, it's, it's always been such a big part of my life. And when I made the choice to leave my home community, I started as a high school to uh, coach and a high school teacher. And then when I took the next step into college, um, I was still teaching. I, I was a, a teaching at San Francisco State University while I was coaching. And when I made the decision to pack up my Honda Accord and drive up to Spokane, it was with the goal of being a Division I head coach. So I spent time at Eastern Washington, spent time as a head coach at St. Martin's, and spent time at, at Seattle University. But in my mind the entire time, the goal was to be a Division I head coach, to run my own program according to my standards and beliefs of what I think will lead to success on the court, but also what I think will lead to um, positive transformation in the lives of these young men. Anything else? Uh, one from Lucas. Congrats, Coach. You touched briefly earlier, but describe the traits you'll be looking for in the players that you recruit at the University of Idaho. Are there certain boxes each recruit will need to check coming into the program? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, I like to think about it um, like a pedestal, where you need all three legs of the pedestal in order for them to be a successful recruit. So like I said, one is academics, one is the admission standards, making sure that they're good students. The second piece is talent. and I'll, I'll, uh, expand on that in a second. And the third piece is character. So we, you know, we wanna exhaust ourselves with the recruitment process with specific individuals. We're not gonna try to cast an extremely wide net. We wanna make sure that the people we're interested in, we do all the research necessary to make sure they're the right fit for the Vandals. That's one piece. Um, more specifically on the talent side of things, I think you're gonna see a lot of skill. It's gonna be a big part of the way we're gonna run the program. It's gonna be very rare that you'll ever see more than two players on the court that don't shoot the basketball. We're gonna to wanna to play with, with a lot of skill on the court, spread the floor, um, and then you're also gonna see a lot of competitiveness. So those are kind of the two pieces of the talent, the talent puzzle. Um, skill, dribble, pass, and shoot, and then the other side of it is, is really being a high-level competitor. That's what we're looking for. Um, does winning burn deep inside of you? you know, we, every time these guys take the court, there's gonna be an expectation that they're competing to be their best selves, to be the best basketball players that, that they can be, and that's what we're looking for. Um, so that's kind of, when you talk about recruiting, that's, that's what we, big picture, that's what we look for. Make sure that they check those boxes and then make sure that they're the right, um, right basketball players for us here at, at the University of Idaho. Anything else for Coach Pruble? Yeah. One more. Uh, Coach, if you have a, a you've talked about your, your blueprint. If yeah. You're coming out of a four or five game losing streak. Yeah. How do you come out of that? You know, it's, it's one of the reasons why I'm very grateful I've had four years of head coaching experience. Granted, it was at the Division II level, but that was a very, very important lesson to learn at St. Martin's. If you trust and believe in the process, a little bit of adversity here and there can't throw you off track. You need to, you need to stay with it step by step. And, you know, it's like climbing a mountain. It's step by step. It, you know, over time, it's going to get harder. It's going to get harder. The air is going to get thinner but you gotta keep, you gotta stick with it. You know, and you might get knocked down a couple times, but you gotta keep climbing that mountain. That's a big part of the way we approach it. So adversity is gonna come. You know, there's no surprises. And I'll tell a quick story. Um, when I was at St. Martin's University, my first year, we were in the midst of exactly what you're talking about. I was all in on building it with culture, building it the way we wanted to build it, and I believed we were making progress. But even at that level, the conference was very tough, and we were in the midst of a four or five game losing streak like you're talking about. And I, I sent a text to, uh, to my athletic director at the time, Bob Grisham. And, um, and, you know, Bob sent me back a, a text that I'll never forget. It was very simple. He just said, you're doing it the right way, stick with it. 
And I know it might sound crazy, but as a first time head coach to have that kind of leadership, to be able to just give me the confidence that we were moving in the right direction, you know, we stuck with it. And over time we got better, we got better, we got better, and it led to great success at St. Mars. It's gonna be the same thing here. You know, like I said, we're gonna compete for championships here. We're gonna build it. It's gonna happen, but it's gonna take time. It's gonna be a step-by-step -step process. There's gonna be some highs and lows. There's gonna be some ups and downs. And you know, all together as the Vandal family, we can get this done if we just keep trusting the process and keep moving forward. Thanks, Coach Thank you all very much for being here.